Good morning, StarCraft fans. It's that time again. It's Group E. We've got two Zergs, one Terran, one Protoss, and of course joining me on the caster desk is the one and only Eon Zerg. What's up, man? Hey, Nayoka. What's up, man? We are back. We are back for a new day of amazing games, hopefully. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the games today. We've got Zero, aka Queen, Ruin, and then we got what you think may not be a rivalry, but I'm pretty sure the players think it is. It's Shine versus Mong. I'm most excited for that particular matchup. You know, I was thinking about this last night. Usually Shine is the one that dictates the game. You know, he's the one with the crazy builds. I would love to see Mong go something like two port Wraith and say like, hey man, I'm not always just going to play defensive versus you. I want you to respect my potential all-ins also. Um... Yeah, that's an interesting topic because um, usually if you are the, the aggressor, it kind of, like, if you, imagine from your, your point of view, um, you know your opponent is an aggressor. Do you really want to be the aggressor or do you want to, like, use that in your, in your favor and just, like, rock solid defense? Yeah, generally you would want to defend, right? But at the same time, that means that he's going to dictate everything that goes on in the game. If you equal the the micro battles, if you equal the aggression, it may throw him off because he may not have practiced for moves like that. So I think it could be an interesting strategy if Mong actually wants to be aggressive here. No, no for sure. Um, but the, I mean, it, it, you, your Terran, like usually, usually Terran is like the race that made the calculate move and. You know, like try to not make a miss. The, the less mistakes you make as Terran, the 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 most uh, convincing you are going to win. That's the way I see it. Yeah, and like you said, Terran's more of the defensive race. If you ha ever have an effective trade, you know, you unsiege, get to another dominating position, re-siege up, and then you're just sitting there and you're just waiting for them to make another mistake, and it's really hard to bust out of. Now, we haven't even talked about our first match, which is Queen versus Zero. Or, not Queen versus Zero. Queen versus Ruin, <laughs> which is Ruin. Ruin's talking during the interview right now. What do you think about this particular matchup? <laughs> Queen versus Zero is yeah. such a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, that, that's a punchline, right? <laughs> it's, it's like Clark Kent it's versus the, Superman, man. It's like, wait, yeah, wait a minute. They're the guys, the base, both the same person. The guy is playing himself at this point. <laughs> no, um, I think, uh, to be totally honest with you, I think Ruin is going to have a hard time. Uh, I think Zero is the clear favorite on the, in this. Um, I think uh, we were talking about this, but the Ring is uh, someone that actually never advanced from from these groups. Um, and this time it's a best of one, so... It's going to be even harder for him. Only is we go like super crazy, two gateways in the mid, zero goes crazy, two uh, twelve hash, and you know magic happens. Yeah, I agree. This is definitely gonna be a tough matchup because zeros Zerg versus Protoss. I mean, his just Zerg in general is ridiculous. Whereas Ruin, he makes it into ASL pretty consistently. But like you said, he doesn't make it much farther than that. It's it's going to be very, very difficult. Ruin, you know, I was looking at his profile page on Liquipedia. For some reason, I thought he did really well in Afrika Team League. I, I feel like I remember seeing him get a three kill, but I couldn't find that actual result. He actually had more results in StarCraft 2. I had to totally forgot that he also played StarCraft 2 at a high level. And based on his profile page, it said he's like close friends with many. So... His playstyle may reflect that. I, I don't see many gains of Ruin, to be honest, but curious if he's got some crazy build order planned for his ZVP. Um, well, I, I mean, he can be friends with Mini, but if I want to with you as well, uh, we can agree that Mini is pretty unique in the scene. Like, you, you can tell it's Mini. That is true. As soon as you see him play and see his micro and game decisions, especially in Protoss versus Terran. If you ever have any doubt if it's Mini, if he's got like 10 shuttles, that's him, man. He's Shuttle Man for sure. 
Yeah, man, ten shadows or maybe like using four chill batteries uh, as proxy <laughs> to to regenerate his river attacks on the Terran expansion. I have seen stuff like that from many. Yeah, he's crazy, but unfortunately, all that craziness didn't translate to an actual victory in ASL. He's already gone. It's been the Afrika Star League of upsets, really. We've already had many eliminated. We already had another big name that's not coming to mind that's already been eliminated. Who was that? The, the Group C? Uh, Soma. Oh, Soma, of course. How do I forget Soma? I like how you sounded depressed saying that. <laughs> I just realized, like, I was talking with you, but actually, I was talking about Mini, and I actually forgot Mini was eliminated. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not realizing all these people now you mentioned that are being eliminated, and like, damn. <laughs> yeah, maybe Ruin's got a better shot than we thought. Maybe Mong's got a better shot than we thought, even though his score is 1 4 versus Shine in the ASL. Maybe this time is finally his time to take down Shine. And now, can you are calling this a rivalry? To be honest with you, he better win this one. Yeah. Because it's, because it's getting harder and harder to, to, to really justify calling this a, a rivalry, you know? Yeah, you know, sometimes there are players that you feel like are the same level as you, but then just for whatever reason, whether it's play style, or whatnot, they just always have your number. And for me, I felt like me and In Control were pretty even, right? I think a lot of people would probably agree with that. But every time I played In Control, we would have like the most epic games. I would get like a huge advantage and somehow it would still go 50 minutes. I would know he's going Hydra Lurker and I'd still get crushed, get crushed by a drop. It could just be that Shine is Mong's Kryptonite for whatever reason. Yeah, I think I control Nick Rain fit, uh, like used to fit him well because he was such an aggressive player. He, and not only that, like he could transition well to, to late game, uh, but it was like sometimes really unpredictable too. Like I remember like I was new to the scene, but I remember you, you I watched this uh, TSL replay packs and like you could see so many different strategies from him and and being aggressive and then transitioning from that, it was really, really nice to see. Yeah, he's definitely really tough to play. Now, what about you? Did you ever have, or do you think there's anybody that is like your kryptonite, or do you not have that experience, same experience as me? Oh. That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. I, I will think about it. Just, so she, <laughs> just like keep it, keep it. Let's keep talking about it. So if I come up with something, I will tell you. Okay. I wanted to mention that um, uh, Shine, this guy has so many bills that um, even if you, let's say you want to be a aggressor, Shine can just like open nine pull speed and just destroy your plans. <laughs> like it, like a rack is out of the question. Nine nine racks is out of the question. Uh, proxy factories and stuff like that maybe can work uh, or not. It depends how good the you can make a wall for yourself and and be safe. But this guy shine and only that. On top of that, he can actually macro very well. So it's not like you can like really. Let's make ten turrets and three bunkers and not do, and not die. I'm fine. No, because he's going to to take the whole map and you're in troubles. Yeah, he's definitely very strategic in that sense. He's thinking about what you're thinking. If he thinks you're going to build those ten turrets, like you said, well, <laughs> no joke. He may just end up building one muta, and then you're stuck with all these turrets that don't help you at all. Oh man, I remember, bro. Like. I don't know if you know this guy, Koget. Yeah, I, I swear to my, I swear to God, like, bro, I used to play him on ladder, uh, everywhere. <laughs> I just like totally destroyed him. Like, it's not even close. Like, I, I remember, like, but then I was so so silly and stupid that sometimes I just like used to to be winning the game and just like you know like trolling him and, t and telling him like, man, this is so boring. I'm leaving and just like live like that, being a being a, being a total retard, right? 
but I, that whole body was for me like beating so easy. And then the guy we play in some important tournament, BSL or <laughs> this Italian tournament, uh, land that happened uh, and when remaster was launched or something like that. This is important tournaments, and the guy just like killed me so easy, bro. Like I, <laughs> it made me so sad. <laughs> Damn, he was metagaming. He was playing the long con. He's like, I'm going to let Eon Zerg think that he's just way, way better than me. But then when it actually matters in the tournament, I'm going to hit him with everything I got. I mean, Koget's... No, let me tell you something very funny. Is that one time I was playing Koget in a tournament. And I was playing, funny enough, Herbrick. And I just got into the main. The guy is super dead, 10 serling. And I, by mistake, I don't know how it happened, but the 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 living screen shows on my on my on my screen, you know, like uh, leave the game. I'm trying to reboot that from the screen, <laughs> but I actually leave the game. Oh my! I was gosh. on the purpose. I'm like, dude, I was about to win, and he actually made me rematch that. <laughs> I've, I've had that happen yeah. before, actually. Yeah. Okay, we are about to, to start, I believe. Yeah, we are about to get into Queen versus Ruin. That's that's a funny story, because often I'll be like Hot King, or I, I've moved my patrol button to Q, and sometimes I'll accidentally hit Alt, which will bring up the uh, uh, the Quit button. And I, I, have, I have accidentally done that also, where I accidentally leave a game where it's definitely not even close to being over. My God, he, he has to... <laughs> Oh my god. He's, he's saying. No, but the funny is that Koga, he didn't even agree with me. Like, he just told the guys, no, we need, to, we need to repeat the game because he just left the game. That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a diff I would take in the win. Like, wait, what? <laughs> you left, man, not me. You didn't drop. You actually just left. You know what's funny? I think the army of the tournament was watching my stream live at the. He was watching it live. It wasn't. I, I wasn't even like throwing man. Like everyone was so it was an accident. But it doesn't matter. It's my fault for leaving. To be honest, I didn't know how to remove that screen. I panic. <laughs> yeah, it can happen. Oh, that that's too good. I think I think I've seen Artosis have that screen pop up a few times, and I've been waiting for him to accidentally quit and just rage off. But I don't think it's actually happened just yet. Well, we do have. Zero, Ver or Queen, I mean. It's so hard to call him Queen because I think everybody knows him as Zero, but that's his ID. So Queen versus Ruin as our first matchup. We've got Heartbreak Ridge. What do you think about 973 here? Because we know Queen is definitely the 973 innovator. You think we might finally see someone get aggressive with Hydras? But let me help you first with the, with the, with the first one. This is how I got used to call him Queen. Because okay, before help. winning ASL, it was zero. When he won the first ASL, it was like, wow, this guy Queen is good. He won second ASL, it's like, oh my God, this Queen is going rampage now. He's the big deal. And since that day, he's Queen for me. Like, like I don't even remember about zero. Um, and the second question, 973, um, it's, it's going to be rare to see it on on her break, uh, to be honest. Um, there, there are cases that you can be like super aggressive. It all depends um, if Protoss doesn't scout, you know, the the the, the temple. On, uh, if he doesn't actually check that, and you can abuse that. Um, but I mean. Um, I have seen people like do 973. My problem with 973 on this map is that um, if you like a sneak sneak at the Dark Temple or something with a with a shadow, like you can be in many troubles. It's, it's a lot to cover early on. Okay, so maybe we won't see the 973. I've still just been waiting for it. It just seems like 973 in the past year has completely just fallen off the map almost i basically never ever see it anymore we're getting a look at queen stats here basically 55 percent win rate across the board his second best matchup is versus protoss surprisingly his versus terran is his best 
the last time he won the ASL was actually versus Flash, so clearly his versus Terran is no joke. And I would like to see him face off versus, versus Mong. We could get a Valkyrie game, and I'd like to see how he reacts to Valkyries, because the way he took down Flash in the last ASL on Hitchhiker was actually he went Mass Muta into into Vike, into Valkyries. And I was like, wait a minute, what? how are you ever going to win this battle? But that's how he did it, so I'm curious how he'll actually deal with Mong if we get to see that particular style and matchup. Mong, one of the few players that are still going for the mech transition. Yeah, man. Uh, at some point, he was like the... You know, it's going to sound, sound funny, but at some point this guy was like, Mon was used to be like one of the best Terrans that we have in the scene because everyone was playing StarCraft 2. Yeah, Mon's definitely very, very good. And as I've stated in previous casts, if you did not watch last season, if there's one game to watch and you like Terran versus Zerg, definitely check out Mon versus Soul Key on Vermeer. You'll know which one I'm talking about because it's the epic one. He did go for mech transition in that also, and he's really freaking good at it. He split the map very well. He's got killer macro. I think he had like something like at least 10 factories. He was everywhere. I would love to see the mech switch. But also, like I said, I would love to see him just bring it to shine and say like, hey man, I can be aggressive as you are. And our players are ready for game one. So we are about to get into our first game of the day. It is going to be Queen versus Ruin on Heartbreak Ridge. Um, is that guy talking to someone? I think he's just talking to himself, maybe keeping himself focused. Because if he was talking to an admin, the admin would be right there, you know, helping him out with like mouse settings or whatever the issue is. Mm, yeah. Yeah, maybe he's talking to himself. No, no, he, he, <laughs> I think he has a problem. Oh, he might. Okay. Because... Yep, I guess there is some type of issue with the headset off, and now you can see he was talking to the admin for a moment, so maybe there is some issue with either the monitor, keyboard, mouse settings are wrong. You can see he's doing something consistently. Oh, man, look at Ciro. Ciro is so bored already. He's like, this is screwed already, broke his PC. Can't even deal it with the pressure. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it is very important to get your settings all correct. You know, Flash has that infamous ruler. You know, a long time ago, I got a new monitor, and I was like, oh, yeah, new monitor is going to be way better. And then I just ended up playing worse, and I'm like, dude, what? How am I playing worse? All I changed was a monitor. You know what the reason was, Zeon Zerg? It's because the refresh rate was lower. So my mouse was slower, and I didn't realize until, like, five years later that that was the actual problem. There is no way you didn't realize right away that the refresh was like slower. I I had never even. How heard is that of even it. possible? Well, back then I had never even known that was a thing. Like I just assumed, hey, it's a monitor. What could possibly be different? But even on Windows, you could see that the, the mouse is like acting different. No. Well, I did after playing, but I but why would my <laughs> monitor change? That, that seems like a mouse setting issue. Okay. <laughs> Oh. oh man, poor you, like five years? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, we are into our first game. We've got in the mid right two time ASL champion. It is Queen. And in the mid left, our Protoss. It is Ruin. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still booging with, the, with your issue with the, your monitor. <laughs> but sometimes it's like that when you go. When you go to LANs, it's not your home setup. It's not what you play every day. So when it comes a bit complex to, to fix that kind of problem. Because maybe you have like a mouse software that gives you a different DPI or something like that. And yeah. that, can be, that can be problematic to fix. Yeah, it, you definitely want to have everything set up like you have at home because if you misclick and make simple mistakes in a tournament setting, that can just throw everything off. And we do have Ruin moving out with the first probe putting down that pylon i'm sure he's sending out oh actually he's not going to scout very quickly despite... nine pull by queen okay he's not scouting you see you see, you, you say he's not scouting oh my god please don't go nexus first <laughs> he's going forage first 
Or no, Gateway. Okay. Yep, Gateway. Well, the, you know what? This, this is going to be aggressive. Yep. So, Gateway, nine gate versus a nine pool. Quick pool means that Ruin's going to need to be careful with his zealots. If he moves out, that's going to be a mistake. I don't think he'll move out, but he does need to be careful in that sense. Probe is going to come in here and see that there is no no hatch, no overlord uh, moving over here. So he should be confident that this was a nine pool, not an over pool. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think when when Ring is going to scout this nine pool, I even think like he needs to make forge before Nexus. Like he need to be super careful because you can die to this nine pool, especially if you are queen with a micro bro. You need to be, be like you need now to show who you are. Yeah, I would definitely put that forge down, especially at Heartbreak Ridge. I, that entrance is there is a huge gap. This is not Sylphid where you build like a by build like a forge and you know there's that only tiny ch tiny choke on the right side or wherever you spawn. I mean that's a that's a huge gap at the bottom by the assimilator. He needs to start clogging it up as much as possible may even have to pull additional probes here there's the forge but as you can see the gap at the top is still quite large yeah no and there is a lot to cover now and it's, it's such a big world if you think about it like he can micro it like he can attack forge and just like fake that he's going to run by or stuff like that yep and there is the ling harassment three lings on the side waiting for those zealots to move out of position so he can start harassing it We've got a zealot pulling off to try and deal with it. I, I imagine the third zealot's about to pop out pretty soon, which is why he's trying to get a few pot shots on the links. And there he goes. The zealot does pop out, and that means that Ruin held this perfectly. Really good control from him. Behind this, we have Queen putting down the third hatch and going into gas now. Yeah, luckily for Ruin, Ciro didn't make more sterlings. He's just going straight away from my, for, for Macro. And... Um, this actually is a bit problematic for for Ruin because his Nexus is so late. Yeah, that is true. And Queen didn't build any more Ling, so his Econ is pretty nuts. I do like how, despite all that action at the front of the base, the probe is still alive, so he gets to see exactly what's going on. Yeah, Lair for, for Queen, so no 973, no, no aggression from, from the third player. You know, I will I will call Zero the perfection of standard play for sir. I yeah, like almost like perfection of standard play. Like I don't think there is a better standard sir than than Zero, to be honest. When it comes to server versus standard, server versus protos and server versus sir, like he is the whole package when it comes to standard. Yeah, he is definitely the man in ZVP. And I seem to have forgot to increase the audio a little bit, guys. So I just did that right now. Hopefully you can hear it. We do have Cybernetics is done. There is the Stargate going up in the main. So we've got another just very typical opener from Protoss here. Meanwhile, Lair's about to finish. So that Spire is going to complete or going to start any moment now going to be slightly slower than the Stargate, so he may be able to pop a couple Overlords, especially that one right there. Yeah, uh, Ring is putting pressure now with Silos to going for the, probably the tier base of um, of the third player. No, he's actually retreating. I like this move, to Ooh, be honest. Double Stargate. What do you think about this? I probably need it because of the delay of the tech and everything. Okay, well, we've got Ling's harassing these zealots. It forced a probe pull off, which is not necessarily a huge deal, but it does impact his econ just slightly. I am curious why he double stargated so quickly. It, where is the spire? Okay, it's back at the bottom of the base, and it's about halfway done. We've got the fourth hatch coming up. Fifth hatch should be starting pretty soon. I mean, maybe he actually like prepared this oh, build. Um, I'm surprised he didn't make Citadel yet. Probably made it now. I don't know. Well, I can tell you Ruin is not happy about this. Why the heck did the Overlord go over there? And he's going to spot 
a second Stargate. He may have been thinking that most likely it's going to be a second gateway, but no. He just finds everything, and that's going to be a six-minute Citadel follow-up. That's not a very fast Citadel, so Zealot timing is going to be quite slow. And now Queen probably isn't going to build that much air. He'll probably just go into Hydras, I imagine. Um, yeah, very possible. Maybe a few spores as well. So he doesn't lose that many Overlords. Yep, we do have two Sayers out. Soon to be th the third and fourth. Hatches are about to complete. There's a Hydrogen as expected. The Spore would be a nice, nice move, I think. Put one at every base. Deal a lot of damage. Make sure your Overlords don't get picked off. Four Corsairs, that's a scary number already. Just one more cycle. Five. Oh, he's got five? Well, I can't kill it. One shot or one shot uh, Scorch. Yeah, they die so fast once you start reaching critical mass of five to seven. And we do have instantly into Hydras because he knows the threat of those Corsairs finding his overlord. Uh, you know what, though? Zero overlords are so exposed. Like, if this guy goes to the main, he can actually punish three overlords almost for free. Yep. Oh, he, I thought he was going to go in there and find them. And the Scourge, how does that connect, man? He's so good with them. Gets a Corsair. Well... But, but still, the, the, the Corsair number is like is really healthy. Yeah, it's still at 6 right now. That's some good control right there. Picking off a single Zealot. And Corsair. Oh, he's delaying him so much. Oh, he may catch that Overlord. Maybe get a second one. So probably going to get... Okay, I guess just one. That's a lot of Hydras out on the map already. 60 supply to 70. The supply is decently high for Ruin, but you gotta think at least 12 supply of it's in air. There really isn't much on the ground anymore. And you believe, like, Zero is still killing, like, picking Zero's one by one. Yeah, I don't get it, man. This, this is, like, exactly what I see in BSL, where Zeke just finds Zealots over and over and over and just kills them for free. It's nuts how Zergs are so good at picking off these Zealots. And there's so many, so well, not that many, to be honest. He's, he's keeping Hydras and main to defend the Corsairs, but I mean, um, Zero is going to have like a huge amount of units, and I'm not really sure how Ruin is going to deal with it. Yeah, Ruin luckily I think has started to get his gateway count ramped up pretty high, maybe at around seven right now. So he'll go from having just a few Zealots to quite a lot pretty quickly but he spent a lot of gas on these on these corsairs there we go there's the first few templars I was wondering when he was going to build them and there is no uh, six hatchery for zero and I'm, I'm surprised with that but it's maybe because he's like he probably doing something else like maybe fast lurkers or or even a drop that would be too crazy with the amount of the corsairs to be honest but uh, i mean it's not the first time i have seen it well, a DT has snuck out. I'm sure Queen saw it because he sees Ah, uh, the bus is coming. Oh, but Storm, where's the upgrade? It's not completed. He has the energy, but there's no Storm. This is over, Eon Zerg, unless Storm completes in right now. Even with the Storm, it's only two Storms. Like, with good, good micro, you don't, you, you, you don't kill anything. Oh, uh, this is unfortunate because I think... Ruin had the correct comp. He had a lot of zealots. He had two storms available. But the storm upgrade's got to be complete. And that means that hero, or not hero, queen, he just runs him over. This game's over. Uh, that was a clinic time in GG for Zero. That was a clinic finish. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it was just such a quick end to the game. It looked like we were getting into mid-game. Everything was going to be fine. And then out of nowhere, there's just a billion Hydras. And the natural's dead. Yeah, I was looking at the clock and 10 minutes of the game. Still no storm. Probably because of the two Stargates and the late Citadel. Uh, so, yeah. I honestly don't know, like... Could you like make more cannons? Uh, it didn't seem like he has too much space to to place more cannons, to be honest. Yeah, his his Sim City at the natural, especially with the Stargate there, took up a lot of space. Like you said, he what he had four cannons, maybe maybe five, and clearly he needed something like seven or eight to hold that attack. So 
could be one of the intricacies of Heartbreak Ridge, not a lot of area to actually build your buildings there. So something to think about in future games if Ruin makes it into later rounds of the ASL. But that means that we do have Queen moving into our winner's match. So congratulations to him. I think during the introductions that had a lot of Korean text, I think it said Queen is 100% making it out of the round of 24 historically. Not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it says. We're going to be going into a break, and then we're going to come up with Shine versus Mong. Welcome back. We are about to get into game two, but of course, first we have our ASL ask question to the ASL. If you have a question that you want to ask the players, go to the Freaka homepage, make a post, and your question may get chosen. I wanted to ask you in that Heartbreak Ridge game that we just saw. You know, often these days I see Zergs go into six hatch play. What what are reasons you would go five hatch over six hatch, for example? Um, I see. I think that the honestly the reason he didn't go for it early on, it, it has to be the sport. Like he actually invested in in something else, and he was like lacking the the resources to make the, the six hatchery because. Do you really want to make six hatcheries unless you are like going super aggressive with Hydra and Sarah Leon? That is not the case exactly with Zero because that was a 10 minutes attack timing. It's, 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 it's usually that's late. Okay, so it's just the spores and because he was following up with the timing, it, it makes sense. We're getting a look at the stats for Shine. He's got his worst matchup is versus Terran. It, it's, it's really hard for him. I know... He played versus Flash a couple seasons ago where Flash like 3-0'd as expected because, you know, it's Flash. But what's funny about that number here is of the nine wins, four of them are against his opponent right now, Mong. So half of all of the victories that Shine has gotten versus Terran is all versus this one player. Yeah, this guy... 
doesn't have a zero percent of win rate against Terra tends to moan. To be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's a surprising stat right there, which is five and seventeen versus Zerg, because last season, as I stated, he had an amazing game versus Sulky. But surprisingly, what are most Terrans' best matchup? TVZ. This is apparently Mong's worst season. You can see it's his fifth, fifteenth time in ASL. He's looking to get farther this time around, but he's got an uphill battle here versus Shine, his nemesis. Man, he has a really good uh, stats against Protoss. Yeah, he's good, man. He's very good. I'm actually surprised that his versus Terran stats are so low, too. It was only 26%. I mean, he's he's really good at that matchup also. I, I don't think i ever seen a Terran with such stats, like super trash against Sir, super trash against <laughs> Terran, and then like super good against Protoss. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like, It, it should definitely be reversed, at least the, the versus Zerg and versus Protoss stat. My God. I gotta say, Mong looking quite fresh this season. He got that slick cut. Looking real good. And we are about to get into game two. Wow, we're already ready. So let's get into game two on Heartbreak Ridge. <laughs> Super focus, Mong. Okay, in the mid right position, Mr. Bag of Builds himself, it is Shine. And in the mid left, it is Mong. Oh man, I, I feel sorry for Mong. He's probably thinking right now, like, what is this guy going to do this time to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. I, I, I would be thinking, like, dude, my main is so wide. Is this going to be another drop game? Because he, it, Shine is well known for going drops, especially versus Mong. So we may actually see another drop from him, whether it's Lurkers or Hydras or Lings or what have you. Yeah, he's probably thinking, I need to make an, a bunker in the back of my expansion as well. <laughs> uh, well. We had Firebat Hero in the crowd right there, as you could see. And we do have a wall off. Okay. That is, I'm not too sure what to think about that depot. That depot seems like it may just be a semi wall, like Ample likes to do, where the racks is go, gonna go out on the top. But that's gonna, if there's ever Marines out of position, Lings will be able to run by into the natural and main. We are gonna have 12 hatch from Shine here. Yeah, standard game. Yep, and that is the semi wall. You can make a complete wall, I think, if you put the barracks on the bottom and the depot a little bit higher. And Mong, he is one of the few players that goes mech, so we've got to keep an eye on his gas. 12 supply has come and gone, though, so not going to be the case. Meanwhile, Shine, I think every single game I've seen him play has been a three hatch. This might actually be even three hatch before pool if he gets greedy. No, it is just going to be pool. No, I think it's a pool and then gas, yeah. Okay. This is actually the first time I've seen him go to hatch. I think last season, every game, it was a three hatch opener. But you know, the, the, there is an evolution of um, the three hatch. It is that now you, you are making like 12 hatch and then you make like two extra drones and then you make pool. Yeah, the greedy pool. It's like 13 supply pool. I know yeah. Rhett, who I'm close to, he he loves that build if he can get away with it. But so many Terran players are aggressive with their Marines. You don't see that that often these days. Overlord gets into position here, and we'll be able to overlook the main and see the command center timing. That'll give him all the intel he needs on to what the follow-up is from Mong. And the command center is up. Uh, Lair is up. Um, now the question is, because I see like a very quick refinery, are we going to see a factory from the from this? So three minute gas or 250 gas, this is a pretty normal timing if you're going to go for a factory. We also I think saw yesterday or the day before that somebody went for a gas timing like this and it ended up being eBay. So 
Oh, that is true. It could be just plus for plus one, or I could be confusing it with uh, Mihu yesterday in BSL. And there is the third hatch. I knew that Shine is a three hatch player. I guess this time it's a little different than his normal opener, though, and he's hiding it on the high ground. It may not end up get scouted. You know, I remember one time I put a hatcher in that high ground. Not, not exactly in that position, but I put it in a position that my larvas were trapped. <laughs> so each time, each time I try to make a union or anything, the the larva die. So it was an useless useless hatchery. Yeah, that that's unfortunate, and it is actually a factory build from Mong. He's moving out with four marines, and the way this academy is timed, this could be for fast upgrades on STEM. We'll see what he wants to do with it. It could also be for scan because he may be trying to figure out. Okay, is this fire? Is it hydrogen? Because right now, all he sees is Lings. I don't think the Spire has started yet, has it? Yeah, yeah, it's in the it's in the main. Okay. Yeah, that little tiny dot by the mineral line. Um, Factory... Are we going to see a starport? I think so. It's gotta be a starport. So, the, I see Terrans, when they got this, uh, this starport builds, for some weird reason, they delay torrent so much that they they end up losing some <laughs> STBs, almost always. Yeah. Um, I hope it's not the case for Mon and he can like establish a solid eco with a good uh, Valkyrie play as well. Yep, he's got his five minute eBay, so it will be in time. <clears throat> and I am very interested on how Mon plays this build because this looks almost exactly what I try and do on the ladder. We've got three racks coming in. We've got the single star port for, for the Valkyrie. We've got the commsat coming down even to scan to see exactly what's going on. But as you stated, there's no turrets up just now. And it's gonna be tough to put turrets everywhere. The depots could get picked oh, off. Oh, the medic, the medic. Almost gets well, he taken down, it. but does not actually get killed off. He needs to get turrets up right now because mutas are popping out. It's so late. Is it too late? Yeah, I think you're right. They actually are too late. In the bottom, okay, there we go. He's got turret coming up. You need one at all all of your key locations. You don't need two just yet because the muta count is going to be quite low. But his his turrets are not up, man, especially in the main. But well, luckily for him, he's just going towards the racks here to harass it. Yeah. Um. No, and the bucket is coming as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, when you rush gas like this, there's like maybe 20 seconds or so where the mutas will be able to deal some damage, but after that, the Valkyrie will be out, and that shuts down this timing pretty damn hard. And because he has three Raxes, he'll be able to ramp up his Marine count pretty high, but as I was stating before, the depot is so far forward, this is really the only vulnerable position for Mong. So Shine has done a good job to at least supply block Mong for now, but now showing the Valkyrie Shine knows what's going on, and I don't see Hydrogen anywhere, so I guess he's going to try and face this with just Mutas. I'm glad he didn't lose that many Marines. That means he is going to be able to to really do a, a timing attack. I'm trying making more Serlings. I'm not, I'm not really sure about this move, because I I mean, at least like he's expecting Mon to move out right now, I don't think it's going to be the case. Yeah, the, the, the barracks count is too low. He was on one racks for so long, and he was cutting Marines to rush his, his factory and Valkyrie timing that the Marine count is way too low to, to engage. So, yeah, he's going to just sit here and wait in the Scourge. Somehow, don't kill that Valkyrie. I thought for sure it was dead. But in the main of Mong, we saw that the armory was spinning, so this is for plus one weapon on the air. This is what a lot of Terran players are doing these days. I think if the eBay just started plus one, it's going to be quite a long oh. ways away, so his marines aren't going to hit that hard. It's like Shine is going like three hatcheries, locker, serling all in as well. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. Luckily, I would say for him, Mong has kept scanning bases, trying to look for the third base that doesn't exist. So because of yeah. that, he doesn't know that it's an all-in. The barracks count is not high. There's no add-on onto the factory either, so there's no tanks. So a lurker bus would be surprisingly effective. Uh, he's making bunker. I was going to say, so smart by bond by just not attacking because there is no need, there is no tier. 
and then I see the, the Hydras, I'm like, oh shit, he's going to die to, to Lurkers. <laughs> but apparently he's so prepared that he's already making bunkers to to defend a possible Lurker timing. Yeah, he knows his opponent, he knows it's the Mr. Bag of Builds that's likely going to be all in. And I am surprised that actually we did have plus one weapon on the Mutas, because armor versus Valkyries are amazing. And once plus one weapon kicks in for Valkyries, well, it's going to be like the Mutas don't even exist, because those things are going to get obliterated. Even if your Valkyrie count is only three, they're going to get shredded. So Shine does need to be very careful, especially with those units. And despite what looked like an all-in, Shine is transitioning this into a third base. Oh, now you can, now you can. There is only one bon bunker, and that's a lot of units. Like, the, the red ball is, wow, it's, it's insane. Can this actually, like, hold that? I don't know. Also, the Marines don't have plus one, so these Lurkers are going to survive for a long time. Here we go, a big engagement. The Lings are getting in here. Stem into the bunker. That was great. And he should hold this now. A lot of the Lings have been thinned out. There's no vision, though, because I don't think there's a science facility just yet. So the Lurker contain could be quite annoying. Oh, my God. Hmm. Yeah, there is a contain, now there is an expansion from Chine, so it's not an only and after all, it's, there is Hive as well going, Evolution in the way, Evolution Chamber. Looks like it's called cool me crazy, but Chine is breaking the, the temple in, in Mon's base. Oh, he is? Yeah. Smart move, and I do like how Shine or Mong is already getting ready for that. I'm very worried for Mong right now. Even though I think Mong's comp is pretty good with the Marine Medic, Tank, Valkyrie timing. Every time we look in his main or natural, I do not see that command center blinking. He just, his SCB count is really low right now. Whereas Shine, he's got a third base. Yeah, and there is no, there is no vessel also. That's, that, that's a huge problem that, that there is no vessel. Because that pretty much like sets that Sir can spend for free. There is no, there is no atom timing attack. And there is the lurker counterattack on the high ground just to be annoying. Good tank and bunker setup. I want to see Shine go into the main right now, and he does. Right as Terrence oh, moving no, out. Oh, but, but cleaning his uh, his front base. Oh, and surprisingly, the Valkyries are not in that army. I would have thought he would have kept them with the tanks and the Marines, but because they were not mixed in, actually he held the muta harassment quite well. Mong actually like he's going to scout all these units in the mid. Yeah, that's all so these lurkers. Oh, he catches the mutas. He knows where they are. Can he get the micro? He did get the micro shot off. Tank does die, so that's one way to use these mutas effectively. Lurkers. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Like this. Yeah. No like this. I okay. No like this. I okay. Oh my god, that's a huge hit and the entire army gets obliterated. I can't believe Shine was able to put hold position onto all those lurkers so fast. That was an instant reaction and he catches the tank. Wow, I'm not joking. <laughs> that is a I game. I mean, I... Uh, joking. He's, he's so unlucky because he was almost like probably... He was so close to see all these lurkers in the mid, and then he just like moved his army away. Yeah. And now all is dead. Yeah, I thought he I thought he saw them for sure. I was like, there's no way that he didn't see those lurkers. But his entire army gets reset. And the problem for Mong, other than just having lurkers at his doorstop, is he's mid-transition into mech. And there's still so much stuff for Zerg right now. <laughs> Oh man, that transition to mech. <laughs> yeah, mech transition is really strong, but you can only do it when you have map control. He has literally no map control at all. Shine is. I mean, to be fair with him, to be fair with him, he almost had map control for like yeah, five seconds. <laughs> he lose everything. That is true. He also is doesn't have any vessels, man. So once this the defiler gets across the map, I think the game just ends. How are you gonna kill it? I have no idea. He actually pulled out the, the, the Marines from the bunker in, uh, on top of his natural, so... Like, in my, uh, Chai can actually, like, punish his expansion as well if he wants. Well, I do see Shine consistently building units, and that means he's not building drones. So even though he's had this third base, his econ really isn't that good. So if there's some world where, mine, where Mong stabilizes, where he gets vessels out and can actually stop the Defiler, 
This is still a playable game for him, surprisingly. Um, 13 kills, look at that. Yeah, but like you say, he, he's like lacking SCBs, lacking eco. Um, set is, is on three bases. Wow. I'm not really sure, like, like how do you uh, even like end, end the contain? Yeah, without the vessels, I don't know how you do in the contain. You try and hope that it never gets there, really. You just run around the map with the vultures and pray that you find that defiler and snipe him before he can get down the dark swarm. We've got Shine taking bottom right, so that's going to be a fourth base for him. You can see Mong is doing a good job laying mines everywhere, but defiler has snuck to the bottom of the map. And there are a lot of mines there, but guess what? Those temples are gone, and there are no mines in the back, and I think... Mong completely forgot about this. By the way, props to Mong because the Vultures, honestly, they are doing a really good job. Yeah, he is <laughs> definitely doing a great job with the Vultures and finding bottom right is a big deal. He can shut down that base for sure. Problem is, is he moves out and that means all of his units are out of position for this incoming Dark Swarm at his natural. Yeah, two loggers in the, in the natural, that's not ideal instantly transfers the scv so mong back on and base. now it's going to get even more contained with the swarm and the lurkers yep. just in your entrance that's super annoying yep and this counter attack is probably all that mong can do he's got not very many marines left over they're fizzling out the valkyries are here though so goodbye mutilus That's a lot of Hydras, a lot of Lurkers, so we'll not be able to continue pushing with this Scourge, get a connection onto the Valkyries. We've got a Zerg versus Protoss moment where Terran is desperately just trying to supply block the Zerg, and he's done a good job. Look at this, 70 to 36. Shine can't produce any units. If he can get his natural stabilized, maybe this is a way back in it. Yeah, Shine is super, super block. He was, he was. But the, the Monk problem is that there is a still no vessel, and I mean that the filer like he can even like consume service and a king going forever. <laughs> he de he definitely can keep going forever at least, or at least it feels like forever for Terran because that dark swarm lasts I don't know what is it thirty seconds. It just feels like it's never ending. That defiler just consumes another ling, so this base continues to get shut down. Finally, the dark swarm goes away. Oh, so that lurker will oh he get forgot. Killed. He for forgot about the swarm. I, I don't think no, he, has he doesn't have energy. But does he even have? Okay, there's finally a vessel out on the map. I thought that Terran may have ran out of scan energy. That's a drop into the main, by the way. Defiler really? lurker. Yeah, man. So annoying. This is just so annoying, <laughs> forcing Terran back and forth where he can't mine anywhere. He only has one vessel. He's one lurker, just stopping your eco. Oh, that I mean, you can even transfer all your workers to the natural because there are still lurkers. Yeah. <laughs> blocking the minerals. And it's on high ground, so the tank isn't even hitting it that effectively. And he's like, F this, I'm going to get my vultures in here to finish the job. Another, oh, I thought was another drop, but not the case. That Valkyrie has seven kills, by the way. So that's definitely worth for him. By the way, um, Shine, his, his population, his, uh, he, he's like, he didn't really grow that much. He's, he's like, he didn't even spend anymore. Yeah, that third base kind of just now became really heavily saturated. So he doesn't have his, oh my god, he doesn't have his biggest econ as you would think. And that is a big mine connection, 80 to 80 supply. I don't know how we've gotten to this state because it feels like Terran's just been on the back foot for, what, the past 10 minutes or so? Yeah, Terran is almost mined out in the main, so resources are for sure going to be a problem. But at the same time, I asked myself if Shine so just overextended too much with, the, with his uh, three bases. What I would he like to try to do so much drops. Uh, he wasted a lot of, of the fighters and uh, lurkers and uh, mutas. Yeah, there we go. I heard a drop, and I, I'd like to see this because he knows that all the tanks and vultures are here. He's whittled down the Valkyrie count to just two. A drop could be devastating, but this is, I think, probably just two lurkers or four hydras, maybe just intending to shut down the third base, cancel the SCV. You know what's funny? I saw the, 
I saw the, these four four units. I thought they were some marines. It's only medics. Yeah, just medics. It'll at least bug out the AI of any A moved units, whether it's hydras or lings. And we've oh my gosh, a muta switch into plus one Valkyries. You would never expect this, but the Valkyries are the Valkyries are out of position in the main, so the mutas could kill a lot of stuff here. Remember, they have plus one weapons, so they hit pretty hard. You just scan that. Why is it too late? He may have even forgotten about his Valkyries. I don't even know if that's them coming right now. Okay, there is, but it's just two Valkyries. Uh, yeah. I don't see the receive of the eight either. That was amazing, actually. Killing those two Scourge with just two Valks. Really good patrol micro. He's doing right that. How he's doing that? It's only two Valkyries. How he's killing I don't know. the Scourge like that? I've never seen that in my life with just two Valkyries. So that was really sick, but in the end, it doesn't matter because there's just way too many of the mutas. And like you said, Irradiate's not there. This vessel has a billion energy, or I thought it did. I guess he did, he didn't have the energy. Now he does, and now that was fantastic. And these mutas are heavily hurt. You got to run, man. This game somehow is closer than I expected. Um, the funny part is that Ser is still like getting heavy losers like losing that those mutants are, are no joke like uh, remember Terran is super like cost effective yep the goliaths are now coming in to help save the day and the i think the goliaths have plus two weapon getting the vessel is huge that's such an expensive unit to build luckily mong has gas banked up so he'll be able to replenish it quite easily but we've got a, basically a 25 supply lead now oh, I lose all the Yep, every supply very crucial for Mong's defense. He does get his third base up and running, though. We do have two one upgrades for Zerg, so the Hiders are heavily upgraded. Also, the tank count is almost non-existent, though. There's only three. Drop would be amazing, and he is thinking the same thing. Use the Mutas to soak up the Valkyrie hits while everything unloads in the main. And this could be a killing move because Mong, the, all the oh, army oh, oh. is in the front. He scanned it. You know how. It's too late, it's too late. Rerouting. Wait, wait, what? Oh, look at okay. that. He knows. He knows that it was going to be rerouted, so it was the perfect scan. But then it gets rerouted back into the main. No. <laughs> what is this ping pong? <laughs> yeah, he's trying. He's trying his best to find the angle. Oh, is he, he's just going to bomb on top of everything. The Goliaths shoot really hard, though. Oh, this is a catastrophe. Those tanks are doing a lot of damage, but with the Hydras unloading on the high ground, maybe it's still barely enough. Yeah, oh, way too many units, in my opinion. Uh. He needed one more mine connection there, and I think finally... This is the move that breaks the camel's back. There's too many Hydras. There's not that many Mutas left over, but there's no tanks here. There are only oh CVs my. left, now. York, and maybe, maybe some Vultures. And Vultures are not what you want versus Hydras. There's a billion more Hydras coming across the map, this time comboed with the Filers for Dark Swarm, and there's absolutely zero AoE to deal with that. Uh, I mean, Mon did what he could, to be honest. Um, it, we can agree that we saw the game end when he lose all the army in the mid, right? With the Lurker Hold. Yeah, so for him to even get to this point 22 minutes into the game was really well done from him because he was just down and out. You can't come back when you're transitioning into mech and you've just lost your whole army to hold position Lurker. So that just doesn't happen. So unfortunately... Shine is going to get the best of him again, and that's going to put now Mong's record just 1-5 in five versus Shine. This is, we can call this the most closer Mong being to a victory against Shine. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, you know what? The mice are good against uh, Hydras on the Swarm. <laughs> they are. If he had more econ, you know, you can't make mistakes like this, but when you're in a position like this, I guess it doesn't really matter what you do. Zerg, look at that. Knight is about a billion drones to bottom right. Get that up and running. The command center also died. Oh, no, it didn't die. It was saved. No, I'm, uh, yeah. Um. 
need more Mine... dark zone. Shine is still going for it. Um... Yep, there we go. Okay. Mong, he's still fighting, man. He does not want to give in to this dirty Zerg player. He's saying, I am not going to give up without my... Until the last breath, man. Oh, mine? No, I... I... <laughs> I know what it is. He's like trying to break his uh, <laughs> unique record against Shine. It's like, oh, <laughs> at least I need to <laughs> to get something positive from this. It's like, it's time to kill more units. <laughs> yeah, it could be. There it is. GG. Well done from Shine. And he gets a victory. And that sets us up for an uh, interesting ZVZ as our winner's match. Now you can... One five. This is not a rivalry, okay? <laughs> Stop okay. calling it that. Okay, I accept it, man. It's just a complete domination by that guy right there. <laughs> oh man, poor mom. I hate the story for him because he was doing so well. He almost scouted the lurkers in the mid. It. I don't even like how he missed that. And then like he was like. They were so close to each other, and then he moved to the left, and I don't know what happened, but maybe he forgot about it, or, well, well catastrophic uh, moment for Mom. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm sure he's looking at the replay right now for the whole lurkers, and he's probably going to see like he missed it by literally not even an inch on his screen. So really unlucky for him that that happened. I think we've got our Hot 6 commercial coming up you can see this is our matchup in the winners side shine versus queen what do you think about that you think shine has a shot versus queen or is this queen all day long no for sure it's cbc guy is super strong um and he's a best of one so i can actually see china boxing first i i can also because shine he can come up with clever stuff like you said it's also zvz it's a tournament setting where players pull out all the tricks. I remember a few seasons ago, I think it was actually Hero versus Queen, where he went for like a hidden third hatch and just ran him over with Lings. So literally all types of builds are on the table, especially with Shine in the game. We're probably going to see that origin as well. Uh, so it means that um, it's, it's a two-player map, so I don't know. Um... Best of one, I will probably predict a 12 pool from, from China. Really? 12 pool? And what's the reason for that? Because as a non-Zerg player, I think of 12 pool as like a middle build versus everything. Um, yeah, because, because there is a high chance that Queen, the most, the, the, the best player, uh, will go 9 pool. Okay, so you think Queen's just going to get aggressive from the get-go? I, I can agree with that. Queen's micro is so nuts, and he probably just wants to bring it to shine, potentially. Yeah, remember, remember it's server to server. Like, it can actually happen that shine goes 12 hash, thinking that Queen is going to go 12 pull, and actually Queen is going 9, or reverse, you know, like Queen going 12 and shine 9. Yeah, that makes sense. But, but um... We will see, man. At least it's a two player. If it is a two players map, it's less. Uh, it's less luck when it comes to scouting because I sometimes I see these pro gamers uh, playing this online pro leagues. They do often, and this the deciding match. It's a CBC, and do you see them like going crazy if <laughs> one of them is scouting to the, to a different direction that is not the one of the opponent. And they are so down already. It's like, oh, I can't believe this. Or I go, or, you know, like all these, uh, all these emotions going because scouting first is a big deal in CBC. Yeah, that's why I always get surprised when it comes down to like the game deciding game in BSL. I see often people pick Sylphid and I'm like, man, I would just pick Butter or something because I want to know exactly what the opponent's doing. Yes, the other opponent or the opponent will know what you're doing too, but it feels like such a risk to go for because of the big advantage you get in ZBZ with that Overlord scouting. Oh, I can tell you that that uh, is a way better map than the the other one you mentioned. Butter. Um, it's the orange the orange map, right? Yeah, Butter. But yeah. it's two player. You both you both get to see what you're doing. 
no, 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 but the, this bottom map is it's, it has some crazy timings and no, 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 I still feel it's a way better map to play. Okay. okay, well, we're going into a break and then we'll be back with that winner's match in just a moment.
we are back and this is gonna be nemesis eon zerg so dark origin was banned from both sides this is gonna be our first nemesis game of the entire season okay four players map um scouting is going to be super important and this is a map that isn't it a remake of other map um, blockchain or something like that yeah it's really similar similar to blockchain the i guess the main difference is there's those assimilators and eggs in the center of the map so you can actually get into bases that way but also the opposing player can kill those and make sure or make it so neither player can get in or out so it has an interesting dynamic in that aspect um yeah but in this case it's going to be a set versus sir there are very few rare cases that we see like a late game cbc i mean i have seen servers to servers that where the players are doing ultra list but <laughs> it's um <laughs> yeah it's pretty rare it's pretty rare you can count it with your hand probably um usually when what matters the most in these cbcs are the timings the bill orders and the scoutings and of course the the micro is is, is so important micro muta uh, i would say queen has a, the best micro muta you can you you can see in in the scene even 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 better than jadon to be honest in, in this day and era i would say queen micro is better than jadon even if jadon was like the master of micro back then I can agree with that. Everybody's gotten so good that you, you had to feel at some point somebody would overtake Jadon in terms of the micro. And in the top left, we do have our pink Zerg. It is Shine. And at the bottom, it is Queen. And this is, as you stated, similar to blockchain. So we could have some really weird builds with those bases being cut off from Ling reinforcement, for example. Bottom middle, mid right are all both walled off. I wonder if either player will take that quickly or if we'll just take the normal expansion, if we even get a normal expansion from either side. Um, yeah, um, you know, I think a scouting is not going to be as important in this situation because they are like in crossing spawns. Um, yeah, but the, the funny is that probably overalls are going to meet each other. <laughs> so they would probably know because of that the sub position of the opening well with you here as the zerg expert something i've always wondered about is naipuls naipul no yeah, it's gonna be nine way wait what no, is no, this no. it's that nine hatchery nine hatch okay For nine hatch. that's weird <laughs> and that's what? super aggressive and no way that queen Oh, no, 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 he's doing 12 pool. Oh, wow. Oh, this game got super interesting already. So which side do you like better? Do you like Shine's opener or Queen's? The thing is that Queen has no way to really scout this uh, this hatchery inside the main. So he's probably going to think, well, Shine is probably doing an overgas or, you know, like a pull first build with a fast muta. And the reality is that he's going to build millions of servings. And if Queen, for example, makes his expansion and extra drones or anything, it's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yep, and there's that hatchery at the natural expansion. So this looks like it's going to be a Ling Flood, and it's going to be up to Queen to scout this or figure out what's going on. Because right now he's in the dark, so is Shine, but I guess when you're just all in all in links it doesn't you don't necessarily need to be looking for anything we've got the hatch no, he, he only need to be careful about is not let anything to go into the main yep. he just need to hold the ramp yep and look at that timing he had just enough minerals to use them all use up all that larva well done from shine perfect execution so far and we have the first few lings of queen moving out there it is speed is up and there is no transition out of this we are just pure on ling man by the way no make no mistake um queen needs uh needs sunken to 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 hold 
If there is no, no Sanken, he's dead. Yeah, for sure. And look at this. Despite having additional links, Shine is only showing six. He's saying, hey, man, there's nothing weird going on. You're not going to be able to get an accurate count on the links. Queen is trying this to get is some This is so risky. This is so risky. Speed is going to kick in. If that Serling gets into the main, I mean, Queen is probably going to make like two songs and like he need to make two songs right away and and just like maybe even pull drones because I think Queen is already droning and not making only Serling. The kick down. You see? Yeah, but he's just gonna go now. He has he has speed himself. And look at this, Queen's actually supply blocked, so he can't build anything right now. The drone is going to move across the map, but that doesn't matter. It's very slow, so Queen might actually just get crushed right here. That's that's going to be way too late. Look, the links are already here. It's too late, Nayok, and there are way too many Serlings, and I don't see Queen has the numbers to to to, uh, to even hold the ramp. Yeah, he's got to he's got to go for it though. Shine cannot let this complete. We've got a massive engagement. It is a huge Ling lead for for Shine right now. The angle is actually pretty damn good for 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 Queen though, but still just way too many Lings. If he can kill the kill the sunken, maybe not. Actually, that was a perfect hold. That was such a crazy hold. Um, I think Shine didn't attack the best he could, but that was, I mean, Queen made. I can't believe he hold that, to be honest. I, I'm in shock right now. I can't either. I'm looking at the supply block and how and knowing how long it takes for a drone to get even just to the natural is quite a long time. So for him to hold that like he did, absolutely amazing. And there's no transition out of this for Shine. Like, this is it. He, he can only continue to build links. He's going to actually try and take a third base, but I don't know if that's really ever going to get up and running. He knows... Queen is spending all his money on Lings right now, so despite there being Lair, there's actually no Spire started. So there is a clock for Shine now. If that second song can get up, that's it. That's game. All right, so he's got to go. He's got to go like right now. I think he might be able to do it because the Sunken's in transition right now, but he's not going. He is just gonna be content with trying to play a three hatch play versus this. That, that is interesting. Well, both sides... I, I think at some point when you're doing a 9 hatchery, you have the resources to make it to 3 hatcheries. But it doesn't really mean that you can continue the game. It's just like, it's just the way it is that you have the resources. Like, continuing from this is, is super hard. Yeah, like, the issue for me is even if Shine, let's say he gets to a mid game, right? Queen's already got a billion more gas than him. Also, Queen already has his natural. So he's obviously going to get the gas running there. So there's going to be no chance that Shine ever catches up in Mutas. Never, ever. There, that's that's not happening. So what do you do from there? Do you? It's going to sound troll, but do you go like Hydras? Because I don't see how you're ever going to have even Mutas. I don't know what you do in that scenario. I don't know. He's only making Serlings. I think he's going just going to, to all in with Serlings. There is no other way. Okay. He made the hatchet because he has the resources. Okay, here we go. This is the engagement of the game. That is a lot of lings, but there's way too many lings for Queen, and he holds it easily. It's not even close. Well done from him. We're going to see a GG now because they're mutas. Um, there, there is no way to kill this guy, man. Two Sunkens, that's it. <laughs> Two Sunkens and Zerglings. Sunkens, Zerglings, and those mutas in the sky. But Shine. that hole was so MVP, now you can... Chai had the numbers to to really destroy everything. I Honestly, I wanted to see the replay of the replay of that because that was such a good hole. Yeah, that was really amazing. With the first meter out, that triggers the all-in. This is it. It all comes down to this. Queen moments away from getting into the round of 16. The Sunken is soaking up so many hits. The muted, it, it's just free hits, man. Now he's got two of them, so he starts two-shotting lanes. Perfect execution from Queen, and he easily is going to take this game. Yeah. Um, by the way, Shine played this different than what I thought. Like, he actually tried to fake it like he was doing a 12 pool, but then he got the Serling in the main, he got everything scouted, and that's it. Like, I, I feel like... I don't know, in my opinion, it's easy to speak now because the game is over, but in my opinion, if he fake it like he was doing overgas, maybe there was more chance for him to to win this. 
Yeah, clearly getting the scout was the difference maker. Because if there's no sunken, easily shine would win this game. But, you know, it happens sometimes. Just one small error switches the favor for the opposing player very quickly. Shine's not giving up, man. He's consistently just sending units across the map. But at some point, the muta count's going to reach four, which means you're one-shotting lings. And then there's just absolutely zero chance. Also, he's starting to pick off overlords, which Shine can't afford to rebuild. Yeah, and he's only making ceremonies. There is no spores. I mean, he's making evolution now, but it's kind of like a joke with six drones. Yeah, he has no money. There you go, single muta. Going to seal the deal here. He can kill the hatchery. Yep, there we go. GG comes out. GG. Well, congratulations to Zero for advancing first with a really nice <laughs> hold. Zero looking rock solid today with a clean, easy CVP. And now with that hold that it was not easy to pull, to be honest. Here we go. Is this ASL Queen Season? It could be. He's looking for that third title. He looks like he's in top form. He crushed ruin and then he had impeccable defense so he's showing two sides of the coin there he can be the aggressive aggressive player while also being the perfect the perfect defensive player and i liked his smirk after the game he's like don't even try that man you know who i am yeah you know we really love to smile after the games i don't know why know. he does that <laughs> i don't either I, I i would like to know what he's thinking like does he feel like he got lucky or does he feel like he just slapped this guy down like what's what's the actual reason for that but yeah you're right he often makes that small smirk another day in the office man <laughs> but yeah another day in the office that could also be what he's thinking like yeah another round of 16 no big deal Uh, um, I think we are going to have an interview, yeah, with Zero, with Queen. I was thinking about that Zero, Queen. You know, sometimes, I don't know if you you face this situation, but to me, there was this place I always go, and they, they, they used to have a name, and then somehow, for some reason, someone else take, take the business and they change the name. Yeah. But I'm still calling the old name instead of the new one. Yep. <laughs> and... It's so weird. Yep. I I know exactly what you're talking about because there's a huge business. I'm sure you've heard of it, Costco. But in the U.S., it used to be called Price Club. So every time my parents want to go to Costco, they're like, yep, we're going to the Price Club. And I always think of Costco as Price Club. Yeah. But to this day, do you still like call it, oh, I'm going to Price Club instead of Costco? Well, I think I personally think of it as Costco, but... My parents definitely don't think of it as Costco. They always say we're going to Price Club every single time. Even like just last week, that's what they called it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, what do you think about the uh, Queen performance? I thought it was great. I thought he was dead. I thought a hundred percent he was dead. I thought, okay, there's no way that the sunken can be that strong and then seeing the supply block also i thought for sure that it would be an overwhelming amount of lings but i guess he didn't build any additional drones and that really saved his butt there not even trying to get greedy and sneaking in a single one yeah i'm glad for him man um i mean this guy i think uh, he wasn't really like happy with the or well, at least he was not part of the universities that pro gamers were doing. So he had to actually stop his streaming. And now he's back for the pro leagues and, and all of that. He was not he was not really part of the of this uh, college or university, whatever pro gamers were doing. Uh, I wasn't aware of that, but I did notice that it did seem like he took a break off of uh, streaming for a while. But it is good to see him back because... A lot of my friends that are Zerg players, they also love Queen here. They think he's the best. Machine is a big fan of Queen. It's his it's his number one Zerg. He loves Queen, so I'm excited to see him finally looking really, really strong so far. Yeah, no, for sure. When it comes to to to, to the game basics, um, it's like you know, like you sometimes. You mentioned very often light that is uh, Terran to 
Do you really want to copy uh, the, guy, the guy to study? I feel that like this is queen for, for the third people. Okay. Well, I wasn't aware of that. But damn, light in zero. I can understand that. So that would be a good, good Zerg to copy for you guys out there looking to learn Zerg. The reason I also pick light is when I watch him play, he's not crazy on his keyboard. Like, he doesn't have 500 APM. Like, you watch him, you're like, oh, I can do that. Yes, he has 300 APM, but it doesn't look like 300 APM, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like... No, I was going to mention, APM is such a... such a funny thing because... I, I remember... Well, where are you? I remember like yesterday that I lose to a guy playing with 76 APM <laughs> and he killed me with two gateways. Yeah. And he, to me, it feels like Bison, but we're going to a break. <laughs> yeah. And we are back, about to get into our losers match. It is going to be Ruin versus Mong. Ruin vetoed Nemesis. Mong vetoed 76. So again, we're going to have another Dark Origin game. And we just went from having the most aggressive matchup in the game to probably one of the most passive ones. We're most likely going to see Terran just sit there, wait for 2-1, and, and then go for a game-ending push. And we'll wait and see if Ruin will be up to the task. Yeah, I think it's going to be to be hard because apparently Mong is a TPP prodigy. I didn't know that, but <laughs> apparently he's just that talented in, against Protoss. Yeah, I also was unaware that his win rate was so hard or so high versus Protoss. It's very surprising to see stats like that, especially having such a low win rate, Terran versus Zerg. But apparently he has some insight into the Protoss race and some understanding that allows him to ascend to that next level. Now, meanwhile, as I stated before, Ruin doesn't have many appearances in ASL. I think his best best performances were in ASTL, the team league, and generally Ruin doesn't make it out of the round of 24. So he's looking to maybe make his mark this time around. Hey man, just like making it to ASL is so hard, it's so competitive, so... 
props to him, man. It's so hard to make it to the to this tournament. It's it's crazy. There's so many people trying to get in. Pro gamers, actually pro gamers trying to get in and not doing it. So yeah, props to him. Just making a sale. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it is very impressive to break it in and break in here because that means even if you make it just to the round of 24, you're what top 50 at worst in the world. That's impressive in any sport. So, and it, and it is nice to see a new face here. Yes, Ruin was technically a pro gamer on STX Soul, so it's not like he's a new face in that sense. But we didn't really see him back then play very much. And I think he's also one of the youngest players in the scene right now. I, I'm not sure exactly of his age, but maybe somewhere in between the age of 25 and 30, which for Brood War is quite, quite young, actually. Apparently he's having troubles again, man. With his setup, what is it? I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> well, I've got a, I've got another comment to make about my monitor earlier. Remember, I was talking about my monitor being a different refresh rate. So before yeah. I before I went to Korea, so this is pretty recently, about four years ago. I bought a new monitor, a 144 hertz monitor. For those of you out there that are using 60 hertz, definitely want to upgrade to 144. You will notice without a doubt that your micro gets better. The mouse just moves more fluid. Well, anyways, I got back from the from Korea. And I'm like, man, my monitor feels different than the one that I had in Korea, which was also 144 hertz. You know what? Even though I had a 144 hertz in a, a uh, monitor in America, I never set it to 144 hertz, man. So the whole time, I wasn't even playing on 144. <laughs> What's wrong with oh me? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, because you didn't have the cable for that. You didn't have the yeah, what is called yeah, the, the HDMI cable. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not HD. It's, it's, it's a different. Actually, it's, it's a different cable. Well, it's called. Well, I, I will tell you later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it makes it even worse because I'm an IT guy. You would think I would know better at this point, but. Apparently, I just I just can't get it together, man. Anyways, we have Mong in the bottom right and Ruin at top left. Yeah, man, Mong actually, I know, I know, I know that Mong is actually a macro guy. This is a guy that loves to play with millions of factories and just like go crazy with his mechanics and stuff like that. So I don't really know if that origin is a map that fit that kind of gameplay. Yeah, that is true. We could see something like a nine fact, or maybe not necessarily a nine fact, but you know, eight fact, like one one timing. We could also see one fact, one starport into seven factories on two bases. No third base for Mong. The third base is very close though, and you even have high ground in your main to defend. So I imagine this would be a good map to take a third base, but we'll wait and see what Mong actually wants to go for. Now Ruin here, however, is he really being a scumbag? Is this going to be Nexus first? Um, I think he is, man. This is the most hated build for all Terran players. 12 Nexus. Oh, man. This is brutal for Mon, then. <laughs> this, is, this is such a good start, bro. Wow. You so right is going Nexus first. Yep, Nexus first into an 11, or maybe a 10 racks, 11 gas. So this is going to be a fast factory for Mong, something like 8 seconds faster than normal, something along those lines. But this is going to be hard to punish. At least it is a two-player map, so he'll find it instantly, assuming he scouts, and there goes that SCV. Yeah, I never played this map in my life, so I don't really know about the, the travel distance. But, um, I mean... It's not going to be easy to punish this Nexus first. Yep, and the probe is tr gonna try and buy as much time as possible. And this is what Ruin does: is sometimes he will go forge opener to make sure that he doesn't get busted. So he could follow up this single gate with a forge or battery to help prevent a bust. And lifting the racks, this is already catastrophic for Mong. You gotta have as many Marines as possible if you want to bust here. Can't have any downtime on that barracks. Looking at Mon face right now, no trash or nothing. The guy is in the matrix right now. <laughs> I guess so. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't care that it's a 12 nexus. I can tell you that I would definitely care. I'm already tilted at this point. 
He's got an arm. Yeah, but Iteran cares. Yeah, but Iteran cares. <laughs> I think... I have seen... I have seen... The best Terras in the world making such a hard face when scouting a Nexus first. Yeah, I think Flash even made a comment in one of his videos that you've got to you've got to do something about it. You can't go into and in just into the mid game and say like, okay, well, I'm just going to expand normally. Like that's just not going to work. And I can tell you from experience, it also doesn't work because they just max out so fast, man. It's crazy. Now that Marine almost gets the kill. The probe is going to have to micro away. By the way, I like it this approach cannon. from Mom. Like, not really committing to to do a bunker or anything, but somehow like doing this is more little delay to to the proto -seacon. Yeah, forcing the cannon out and the forge this early is one way that Terran has already evened up the economic lead for Proto. So that was well done. Also, getting the Marine in is fantastic. He's got to micro that probe, and if he can actually get a probe kill, that would've been great. But it does end up falling. What is that? Oh, he's going to jump it. He's, he's going to jump it over. He's going to put the vulture right up against the mineral field and jump it into the main. I didn't even think about that. Oh, man. Mong is not even breaking for a second. The guy is rolling the matrix. like thinking different, doing different. Oh. Uh, I mean, can, can this work or is this for YouTube? Well, I've never played this map i imagine that mong has a lot of experience here it, he probably can get it to work but it's really hard you have to have like you got to be in the perfect spot so he's spending a lot of time trying to get it in there but if he can get it in there he can definitely get multiple probe kills three times he can't get it oh no you can I oh, think. he got oh, it! He's doing it. Okay. And because he went Oof. forged, there's no goons out right now. So hello, vulture into the main. This time, this guy's no best, so he better like King of Workers. <laughs> he, yeah, he better get some probe kills here. He spent so much time getting in. No, oh, so dead already. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, he spent so much time for all that, and then doesn't get anything. At least he, it didn't seem like he missed any workers or macro productions, and he's still going into fast armory. So at least his build didn't get jacked up. But yeah, that's again another heartbreaker. Um, yeah, but you know what, like you say, Mong just going with his build. I, I like it. Um, non, I mean, the guy actually is a TPP prodigy, so I, I, I trust him with, the, with his choice. Yeah, and with the Vulture getting into the main, this has actually forced out a fast cannon in the main in case there's a drop or if in case somehow another Vulture gets glitched in. So this is now two cannons and a forge that you really don't want at this point in the game. So damage has been done technically by the way now very nice mark control by mon uh, like you're really covering like oh run by with the wolf doors yeah, he's working well he's i killing he's killing workers yeah, i've never seen this before just bulldozing his way into a cannon and a zealot and he gets like five probe kills now that was definitely worth for three vultures we do have support bay coming in for for ruin so he's going to follow up with uh, some her reaver harassment we only have one factory right now so Terran is really lacking units it's lacking units um but i mean the map is it's like well my well mined um they he's, he's covering a lot man i feel like i feel like he's going to be fine to be honest I, i'm surprised that the game is going like so fine for him like it He's even like making a bunker already in the natural. Um, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, I don't know what he, what the, what the future plan is going to be. Like, is it going to be a common center? Or is it going to be two extra factories and try to to really be more aggressive? I don't think there is a need for that. Actually, it's Starport. Yeah, Starport in an interesting spot. That drop or that shuttle. Oh my gosh. Okay, he get, clears that mine. That shuttle is going to be. Wait, what? He elevator to probe out. Okay. Well, anyways, I thought that that was a reaver in there, and if it went to the bottom side and denied that starport for a while, that could really hinder the upgrade timing of Mong because you rush that armory quite quickly. Yeah. Um. I mean, this starport. Maybe he's going to make a grace. Um. I because I would be surprised to go drops when there are cannons everywhere. 
and also, or maybe it's just a starport to go up fast plus two. Yeah, the science facility just got placed right next to it. I think what he wanted to do here is when the observer comes into the main, he's not going to see the starport, he's not going to see the science facility, and maybe Ruin thinks Long is just going for an all-in, like 8-fact, 1-1 one, one timing. But we know that that's not the case because the science facility is actually on the map. He will actually be going into plus two. So interesting placement. Reaver is out. So we are going to finally have some shuttle harassment. And that is a Stargate, by the way, at the bottom side of the base. So it's going to be carriers. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, I haven't seen a Citadel, so it should be carriers. And he's also oh, got a lot right, of gas. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Um, is it like a bit too fast for carriers or is it never too fast to, for, for carriers? <laughs> I don't think it's ever too fast for carriers, man. Especially when Terran went for one factory vulture harassment for so long. He knows that the t the tank count should be pretty low right now. So I think he can get away with it, especially with 12 Nexus. He got so much money. Yeah. Um. You know what? Protoss uh, Proto 3 base is already starting to, to do work. It... It's really, I, I have the feeling now that minute after minute, Mond is, is more behind. Um, I'm really worried about uh, his next choice because, like you mentioned, oh, he's got the carriers. Yep, great scan there, seeing the double Stargate and seeing the lack of gateways. You can always go into two Stargate Arbiter, but when you see somebody with this few gateways, there's almost no chance that this is gonna be arbiter so he already knows and one thing that i keep seeing in ruins main is the cybernetics is not spinning and you gotta have upgrades on your carrier so hopefully he can get that spinning pretty soon you know what now you can upload a fast plus two is actually like isn't it like really good against uh, interceptors yeah it's amazing versus interceptors they take one less shot to kill look at this uh, factory explosion right here yep, seven fa it's gonna be a seven fact two one and his plus two is so fast that he'll be attacking probably at around like 12 30. i think that will give ruin three carriers which is a decent amount but it's really only scary once protoss reaches something like six carriers so this timing is going to be really strong for terran yeah, I think, uh, wow, these, those bridges are so bad, going to be so hard to break. But I feel like Mon, Mon has a solid plan to to take that tier, tier base down. Like, if that actually works, it's going to be really nice. If that fails, that's probably going to be the game because uh, the tier expansion is going to be way too late. Yeah, it's definitely going to be way too late, and Protoss is already setting up for potentially taking a fourth base. Protoss is already up 40 supply, and like you said, it's going to be really difficult to get across the bridges. So even if Terran has a strong push, if Protoss can buy like 30 seconds to a minute of time, those three carriers for sure could turn into six by the time the Terran gets across the map. Oh, that was, he just wastes like six tours, but at the same time, he killed one river. Now it's going to be a bit easier to... To really take go for it yeah he did get the reaver which will allow him to get out onto the map but you gotta have <laughs> all your vultures man like you're going for a timing you gotta actually have supporting units for the tanks tanks are great but if there's no vultures the ground army will no they're wrong by now you can yeah but i don't think this is working he can't lose these vultures laying mines is fantastic but he's got to save the vultures can't let those die he really needs them to help with the push Yeah, he can't he can let this protoss like get too many carriers either. So he really needs to to be doing a timing. That's a oh, he also must snipe the shuttle. Big reaver shot, and this is the moment. Plus two should be kicking in any moment for Mong. So he's got to get out on the map, man, because there are those three bad boys already completed. Oh, the reavers are just so hard to deal with getting across the bridges. Oh, fantastic reaver shots. N n knocking down, what was that, like three more tanks? Yeah, um, so, um, so the, the problem here is that... Dude, look at the control. He's making so much time. Yeah, he's just buying time. That's the thing. It's And he's killed almost all the Goliaths. Look how many are left over. It's three Goliaths. He can't even push with this anymore. Three carriers will just win. 
Oh, those yeah. are great mines. That that would be fantastic. Oh, he get, triggers all three. He gets four goons. Wow, so many changes now, Jochen, but there is a big problem. It's called carriers, and there is no anti-air. Oh, six carriers or five carriers already out. He only has four interceptors, though. Does he not have the upgrade? You got to have the upgrade, man. Oh, this would be a By huge way, mistake. Mon with the tier expansion. Um, now he's trying to contain the mean. This is not working at all. Yeah, this, this contain is not going to work. The carrier count is way too high. And that's going to be a dead tank. The third base, I, I think he might be able to get it. But it's just so many carriers already. It's going to turn into eight soon. It's, it's, like, it's like just like going to throw all his units to kill that uh, for, uh, for Nexus. Um, maybe he feels confident that three against three is... is uh, can can do it yeah maybe uh, he does he is gonna have insane upgrades like the carriers i think have plus one weapon they don't have any armor they don't have any shields and terran will have plus three at around 16 minutes which is nuts but by then the I mean, carrier can, yeah i mean now you can the, the process is losing so much ground army yeah he, he doesn't even have speed on his zealots like Where's the ground? The Goliaths are doing way more damage than I thought. There's still somehow two tanks. One of the carriers actually died. That is so close to uh, dying also. He he actually needs a battery, man. That is damaged carriers. He needs to heal them up. That's a dead Nexus. How'd that happen? I don't know, man. But uh, something I already know is that he lost so much ground army. He doesn't have, like army to 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 really tie, to support the carriers anymore yeah, you, need su you, you, you need ground support to to help the carriers yeah you do and those those goliaths hit really hard i like how ruins abusing the cliffs here bugging out the ai of the goliaths so all these goliaths are going to die and all they did is, is damage the carrier shields which they can obviously heal that nexus he's got to get it it's so close to being knocked down and he is going to get it just barely he did, but Mon still with aggression. I don't feel like it, he need to overcome it right now. He probably need to chill and I don't know, trying to try to maybe I don't know build towers where you can because carrier's mobility is also great to 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 punish Terran. Yeah, and we've got the fleet now. There's like eight carriers. The supplies are heavily in favor of Protoss. What Terran needs, I think, is just spam a billion turrets. He's got a lot of money, but he doesn't have that much gas. And turrets are not actually that bad versus carriers if you're building them in huge clumps. Now, this could be devastating. A reaver-carrier combo into the natural. Um, yeah. Funny enough, Mong army... I don't know what he's doing, but he's not ready to defend these carriers. If he's going to move the Goliath in position, there's the shuttle. He is not going to commit here. He is going to find the starport and science facility at the bottom. Oh, it's like the siege tanks. Yep, goodbye tanks. Now he can unload that Reaver, man. Reaver carrier, it's great. It's underused. Oh, he's shooting some Goliaths. It, it's so hard to deal with this. The Reavers are just so strong. And the third base completely open. Ruin's going to jump on it. It's funny to me those Zealots still don't have any speed. But I don't see how he can actually fight this army at the natural. How, how does he actually kill anything there? Yeah, man. He's like eight carriers. Uh, how do you deal with that? You don't. The angle is amazing. And the Reavers just pack such a punch. Anytime the Goliaths get close... They're just going to get blown up. That command center is dead. And I, I think at this point, it, it's too far for Mong to overcome. He's going to probably be eliminated from the ASL. Ruin with a sick carrier timing. And he should be moving on into our deciders match. Unless Mong comes up with something crazy. He was able to defend the tier base. He lost the national. But yeah, he seems like the TBT Prodigy is having a hard time right now. Yeah, he just doesn't have the supply. If the supplies were maybe like 150 to 160, I think he still would have a chance despite losing his natural. But with supplies being so low, look at look at his money. He just doesn't have any money anymore. No, he's mi missing gas. You can you can you can really support seven factories like that anymore. Yep, this is probably the last ditch effort here. He's gonna try and shut down this fifth base. 
that Protoss has, but the Goliaths, they're just dying left and right. Meanwhile, getting almost no damage done onto the carriers. He's doing a good job killing interceptors, but Protoss doesn't care about interceptors when he has this much cash. He can actually like attack that expansion from the from the low ground. Just need to scan and put the tanks to to do damage to the eco or to the Nexus. Yep, he, he should he should bring these probes back. Okay, he's gonna lose a couple probes here, but he instantly killed that tank that was in range, so no longer is he gonna lose probes. Damn, look at how strong those Goliaths are, man. The plus three upgrades really kicking in, really doing a good job versus the interceptors. You can see the carriers really don't have that many left. It's just the carriers have equal numbers to the Goliaths is the problem. I mean, yeah, but there is just it's too much now. You can it's too many carriers. It's too, a lot of Grand Army, and I feel like this is this is last minute for Mon. Yep, it's gonna be his last stand. His third base is about to die. There it is. GG and well done by Ruin. He knocks out a very strong. TVP opponent. Wow, man, poor Mon. I think he did well, to be honest. To be like, he faced so much as adversity, like Nexus first. Then he got a bull tour in the main. Didn't do any damage. I mean, what else can be can can go wrong? Like, yeah, I think he did well, to be honest. Like, I wouldn't be disappointed to lose the game, to be honest. Yeah, and I liked his build order choice. I think the 7-fact 2-1 follow-up, that's what you should do when you scan the carriers like that. He, If he could have gotten across the bridges a little bit faster, the carrier count wouldn't have spiraled out of control. But you got to give props to this man right here. He did a fantastic job with the Reavers and Goons. Those Reaver shots outside of the bridges did so much damage, not just to the tanks, but also getting rid of a ton of Goliaths. Once... Mong finally got across. There were only three Goliaths left. That's how much damage those Reavers did. Just crazy control. And that sets us up for our final game of the day, which is Shine versus Ruin, a PvZ. Yeah, that's going to be good, man. It is going to be good. We'll be going into a break, and then we'll be coming back with that matchup in just a few minutes.
We are back and we are getting into our final game of the day and we actually are going to have Sylphid as our final map and it is of course going to be Shine versus Ruin so this will be an exciting PvZ. Oh man, so th that is good news. Sylphid in the mix. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that Sylphid was in the map pool because we haven't even seen it just yet but that is going to be our final map so it'll be our first Silphid game of the season. And we know Shine. <laughs> By the way, Silphid, Shine, we're going to see a 973. <laughs> oh, you think so? This is going to be it? That is a big chance. Well, you know, casting with Scan for a few seasons, he's talked about how cannons have additional range when they are, when Protoss is defending like top the 12 o'clock position like the vertical you can lay them out or the, the hydras have to attack vertically so if shine spawns or if ruin spawns top middle do you think he'll still do it or do you think it just doesn't matter for shine yeah i mean when when something like that happens they they still snipe the caron and then just continue killing the wall <laughs> okay well we'll see if he wants to go for that 973 i would love to see it because we don't really see that particular build that often these days. Ruin's got to be feeling pretty good now that he's taken down Mong and, you know, he just played, so his hands are definitely warmed up. And I think he's got a good shot taking down Shine. We'll see if he can make it happen, though. Let's get into our final game of the day. Okay, in the mid-left position, we have Shine and Ruin spawning in that 12 o'clock that I was just talking about. It is Ruin. Ayo, can you script this? I don't know, man. Sometimes the cards just fall into place, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. We're, we're just talking about it. I know, and you know, I mentioned Sylphid and Butter earlier, and you seem to really dislike Butter and highly like Sylphid. So, what about ZVP on Sylphid? No, no, but no, don't, 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 don't take me wrong. Like, I, I have nothing against the other map, but it happens to be that Sylphid is one, one of my favorite maps. Okay, well, along with uh, with Circuit Breakers. That, that's, of course. that's my two favorite maps. Of course, I think everybody loves Circuit Breakers, but but why? As a Zerg player, do you like Sylphid so much? Because it's like, it's like it, the way the way I spend on everything just like turns out that you can make like a, a really solid defense in this arc style I like, and it's like it, it's like everything falling to place. You know, it's like it, it's hard to explain to me, but it's like when do you have in these maps that they put a mark. At, yeah, this this is where the the command center goes, or the gateway, or whatever. That's for, that's for me like the whole picture of about how CBP works. That that's pretty much it. Okay, well we've got a twelve hatch from Shine here. Meanwhile, this is actually a ten gate opener for Ruin, so he's not going in for that nine gate aggression. And Shine gonna follow up with uh, an eleven pool. Oh, but there is room for there is room for Ruin to to be aggressive with this uh, with this one gate. Look at the pool is starting now. Yeah, you know, often I see Zerg players actually going into eleven hatch. I guess because of all the aggressive plays that Protoss players make. But Shine being a little bit more greedy, and of course the probe being a nuisance like usual, getting a few pot shots down. Yeah, man. When do you see a worker moving like that so fast and everything? Just run. Yeah. It's so funny you say that because a lot of times, you know, you play like a barcode on the ladder. And you're like, oh, is this guy actually good? And it's and you find out that they're good because of how they use their workers or like a single zealot move. It's not because you realize like 20 minutes later in the game when they've got like a billion units, like they macro amazing. It's really, you can tell right from the get-go simply because of their worker control. Yeah, that makes a difference. There, there, there are like cases where like the guy is super low as well. He does all of that, make pylons in your naturals and block the hatches and everything, <laughs> and they just die because he forgot to make cannons. 
Yep. Definitely. But, the, but make him, the, you know what? Like, you can actually tell the difference from what you say. It's like the, the way they move units, the way they move silos and workers, you can tell the guy is good or not. Yep. Indeed. Uh, there are so many times that every time I see crazy control like that, I always think about what Artosa said one time. He said, like, oh, is this ASL? Is the ladder ASL? I didn't know we were playing ASL because he gets mega tilted whenever somebody's super tryharding. And we do have a cybernetics at the front, so Ruin's build is scaling really quickly, but he lets in two lings. He lets in maybe four lings. Yeah, um, he does one worker, but I, I feel like he can use... I, I, oh, when I lose two workers, that's, that's too bad. Oh. But... I mean, he could use it uh, against his favor by killing all these earnings for free, but it's, it's not the case. They are doing damage already. Shine looks like he's on top of his micro. Um, that actually tells me that maybe Shine is going for more aggression because I see a lot of Zerlings. Yeah, the Zealots are counterattacking, but there's still three more three more Lings out on the map. He's gonna get into the natural. He's gonna cancel this cannon. And this is snowballing way out of control for Ruin. He's gotta pray that oh. these Zealots deal a lot of damage. That's a cancel. Oh my god, so many probes have died, man. These Zealots have to do damage and they're not gonna do anything. No. Shine is making a lot of Zerlings. I think... Uh... I think Rin is right now in a lot of trouble, losing more and more workers. Um, not even a cannon in the natural, so that means a counter attack can just like kill him as well. Okay, the Zealot getting into the sweet spot. This is gonna buy a decent amount of time. The Zerglings have just killed so many probes though, dude. It's gotten like eight kills. This is crazy damage. He has so many Lings left over that he can still attack the front and then use Lings in the back. To pick off the cannon this is devastating damage luckily ruin has a corsair so maybe he can start killing some overlords maybe supply block shine but this is shine is just running away with it i don't know man i saw ruin like checking his chair um <laughs> i don't really know it's losing too many workers like it's looking really bad for him right now yeah, Shine's main drone count actually isn't that high. Neither is his natural, so maybe this is playable for, for Ruin. Getting the Overlord is fantastic. This is one way he can get back into the game. He's finally going to clean up all of the Zerglings. What about Spy timing? Oh, Spy is, is far from completion, so maybe he can kill like two Overlords. Yeah, he desperately needs to get two Overlords. Can... Oh, Silot in the, in the tier? Ooh. There we go, I didn't even see that. So maybe a couple drone kills, maybe not. Zerglings moving into position. Oh. Um, You know, uh, Shine is also missing one hatchery. I think he forgot about it. Well, yeah, I, I see a fourth one going down at the natural right now. That's another overlord that's dying. The Scourge, oh, he didn't get that additional overlord. That would have been a big supply block. Scourge almost get the rallied Corsair also. He's going for the double? What, what is this? It's just a scouting. Oh, goodbye. How many scorch may chime, man? I see like a, like 10 scorch right now flying. Oh, he wants it. He wants it. Oh, the control. Oh, two more hits. That is terrible. He didn't get it. Oh, Ruin's not happy. He's. I think he's accepted his fate that he's taken so much damage, but he's actually decent in supply, and Shine has been supply blocked for quite a long time, so maybe Ruin can transition out of it. I don't think he should give up hope just yet, but you can see the reaction on his camera. He is not happy at all. Yeah, but because the problem is he's so exposed to mutas, but in my opinion, he, sh he should not care too much about it because, first of all, Shine took a mineral only. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think there is a still hope for him, man. I, he, like, the guy looks devastated, but, um, I mean, regain and make units. It's true that his eco on the main was terrible as well. Like, he, he took so much damage. Yeah, one thing oh. I'm spotting is Ruin's probes. He has so many at the natural, but not that many in the main. Muta's gonna come out and stop this attack, and this is not going to get much damage done. The Lings are going to come in here. He's going to lose all of his Zealots. I wouldn't be surprised if 
Ruin just taps out here because of how the game has gone, and he seems kind of tilted out of his mind. But yeah, he's still down. Okay, Corsair baits the Scourge in. Does not get the kill, though. He's going into a second Stargate. He's desperately trying to hold this Muta timing, but he may just die. There's only one Sair here. Good control. About as good as you can do, but what can he do? He's got the Scourge sitting over top of the Stargate to intercept the reinforcing Corsair. Zealot counterattack isn't going to do anything. Um, it seems like... He's really prepared for this, and things really didn't go his way, man. Because he, he's so devastated, yeah. Yep. GG. Yep, GG coming out, and that means Shine. He's going to make it into the round of 16 again, taking down Mong first, and now eliminating Ruin. So well done to him. Yeah, man. I, I, I feel like he... I think he understands, like... He, well, he made some blunders in that game for sure, like losing that many workers and then losing, I understand he lost the first Corsair, but then losing the second one just because he wanted, he wanted to kill that Overlord and then not ending up killing it, that, that's, I mean, I feel sorry for him to be honest. Yeah, I do too. I think he could have had a shot if he just didn't lose that overwhelming amount of probes. Like, he lost like 10. If he had lost maybe 5, it still looked like a manageable, probably would have been a manageable situation. But, you know, sometimes that happens. The gap on Sylphid catches you uh, off guard. And look how happy Shine is. He's excited about making it into the round of 16 once again. Yeah, man. Solid player. Yeah, and he really didn't play, you know, crazy builds. Like, he went standard Muta versus Mong. He had a great follow-up with the Lurkers. Of course, the whole Lurkers in the middle of the map were game-changing. I think the most wild build he did all day long was the two-hatch in the main and try and Ling Flood Queen, and that almost got him a victory and out in first place. Yeah, this this uh, this Chang, actually, the, the Chang we're seeing this time is just the one that is pretty much using the experience over the, the aggression, I feel like. Yeah, I wish we could hear what uh, Shine is saying right now because I heard Sinner. I'm sure they probably asked him about the lurkers in the center because that's the first thing that com comes to mind when I hear that. I mean, that was just an insane, insane move. No, that changed the game so much. It totally changed the game. Well, we've got one group left, Group F, if I remember correctly, it's Stork, Light, JYJ, and the last person escapes me. Let me look it up real quick. And that guy looks so devastated. I asked myself if it was the first time he was like in a position to advance to, advance to the, next, the next group. Yeah, he may have felt like it was his best shot this time. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's like that, man. Like, I understand him because I used to compete, and sometimes you train very hard, and it just didn't happen. It was not your day. It is what it is. Yeah, I can totally relate. You know, WCG was like once a year, right? And there are seasons where maybe I wasn't necessarily the best, but then you get up, you get there, and you get like last place, and you're like, man, I played way too much to finish in last place. I'm way better than these other people. Maybe I don't go very far in the tournament, but I definitely shouldn't have gotten last. And, you know, that could be what he's feeling. Also, ASL is so competitive. There's no guarantee that you're going to make it again, right? Like, it is really difficult to make it in. This could be his last chance making it in, right? But I think Ruin's good enough. We'll see him again in the future. Yeah, I really hope so, man. I don't really want to, like, have this image, image for him as the last show on the ESL, to be honest. Yep. Uh, he, seems, he seems to be someone that cares, and when you see someone that cares, and, and to, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations to Shine. The guy has been at it for a long time. This, this is a guy that has a lot of experience, play finals, play Pro League, um, and he's uh, one more ESL season and going to be the pain of someone in the next <laughs> round. Yeah, it could be Bisu's pain. I know Bisu hates to play versus Shine.
and we do get a look at how the day unfolded. Queen takes down Ruin, Shine, of course, taking down Mong, and then Queen getting out in first over Shine, Ruin beating Mong, Mong playing well, but the Reaver's just insane, and then Shine ruining Ruin's day in the last game of the day. And then as I mentioned, Group F is going to be on Wednesday. We have our uh, our players qualified for the round of 16 already. Five Terrans, six Zergs. Protoss needs some more representatives, man, but there's only one left. It's just Stork in Group F. Uh, who is the Group F looking like? I forgot. It's a Stork and who else? Stork, Light, Light? JYJ, oh. and Soxry right there. And Soxry... He's an he's a killer. He can definitely bring it to these players if they're underestimating his ability. I remember him even beating Flash a couple times. He could be the silent dark horse in this group. Uh, now you can, if you ask me, Stork is not the best player in this group. I also don't think so. I think Light is the clear favorite here. This guy does not lose Terran versus Protoss. He is so solid, but. A sleeper Terran in the bottom left, JYJ. This guy has gotten surprisingly good results, I think, in the past five seasons or so. He even took out Bisu a couple seasons ago, so he could make it out in second place. Or, or first, yeah, even. I remember this guy coming up with uh, with Royal, and I was like, yeah, these two guys are the one that, you know, the feature of Terran. Turns out Royal already won his ASL, and JYJ... Um, still going, but you know what? Why I say that they are the future of Terra is because these two guys are the ones innovating the most when it comes to builds. Yeah, Royal and Rush. Uh, no, and Royal and JYJ. Royal and JYJ. Okay. Yeah, they play so different compared to the other Terrans that I, I they see a lot of innovation with them. Okay. To be honest, I don't watch JYJ that much, but I do know, obviously, Royal comes up with his own builds. In my experience watching JYJ, he's, he's just super solid. I don't necessarily see crazy builds from him, in my opinion, but he's super deadly in Terran versus Protoss, just like Mong was. If we When we get to see his profile stats on Wednesday, I'm sure you're going to see something like a 60% win rate versus Protoss, because lately that's where most of his results come from. He just kills all the Protoss players. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I do you think a store ha has like a fair chance to make it? I think he's got as good of a shot as anybody else, but I don't think really Stork plays as much as the other players. To be honest, I, it, Light obviously is playing all day every day. JYJ also see him playing all day every day. I think Soxry also playing quite a bit. I think it's going to be really hard for Stork, but. At the same time, everybody knows Stork's best matchup is Protoss versus Terran, and he's very good with carriers. You know, he could make something oh, happen. Yeah, that is true, man. He's, he's like carrier expert, so if we pull out some of these uh, carrier bills, like I can actually, I can see him like, like being being in trouble. I don't know if about about advancing, but just being in trouble. Yeah, he's always a threat with any Terrans in the group. And during one of the breaks, we actually had a highlight reel of Stork versus Light. If you guys were wondering where to find that game, because it looked crazy. Tank Goliath comboed with four racks, Marine Medic. That's an insane game that I want to see. It was from Season 9, Round of 8, Game 3, if I remember correctly. So I'm probably going to be checking that out on the Afrika channel later on today after this cast is over. Yeah. So next cast is going to be on Wednesday. Yep. Wednesday. Same time as always. And that's that is that is the last, the last group, no? Yep. If I'm not mistaken. That is the last group. We're gonna find out who's gonna round out the round of sixteen. Then I think we have the group trawl on the weekend. So no games. And then I think the week after we will finally have more games. So casters have given us the signal. That's the end of today's games. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye bye guys.